Live from New York City, it's the Gary Null Show. And now, your host, Gary Null. Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Null. Always a pleasure to be able to share positive insight into how we can live a longer and healthier and hopefully happier life. We begin with a, a study from a university in the Netherlands. It talks about something as simple as apples and pears can slash your stroke risk by 50%. Wow. Now, we know that apples have quercetin, and quercetin is simply one of the most powerful healing ingredients you can put in your body. I always like to match it in equal amounts with vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams of quercetin. Onions also have quercetin. We're eating the right way, according to this university, can create some really good benefits for your heart and help prevent stroke by up to 52%. Mind you, there's nothing else they're asking to do here. They're not asking you to change your whole diet. They're not asking you to uh, exercise every day. The other supplements like vitamin C, vitamin E, tocotrienols, very important for stroke, tocotrienols and blood pressure, but also magnesium, L-carnitine. What if you took all those and a healthy diet in the process and de-stressed, then you wouldn't have to have any concern about a stroke because you wouldn't be doing anything that causes a stroke. So the researchers believe that the high content of quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N, a potent antioxidant in white fleshed fruits is what gives these foods their healing power. And of course, it should be noted that most fruits and vegetables that have white flesh tend to be loaded with quercetin, not just apples and pears. They studied 20,000 people who kept detailed food records every day of what they ate over a 10-year period. And when the data was analyzed, it showed participants who ate high amounts of fruits with white flesh, in particular apples and pears, showed a 52% risk reduction, and that's important in stroke. So let's just make sure that we're getting a lot more fruits and vegetables into our diet. All right? Just something that simple. By the way, grapefruits, uh, they, bananas, legumes, they all contain quercetin. That's one of the reasons bananas also have potassium, also have magnesium. They're good for you as well. According to the University of California at San Diego, consuming turmeric, T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C, for just two months can increase your good gut bacteria by a substantial percentage. Now we all want a healthy bacteria in the gut because we know now that the more healthy bacteria, the healthier of our immune system, the less disease, especially the itises, the ileitis, colitis, spastic colon, Crohn's disease, etc. So when you're eating sugar and refined carbohydrates, pretzels, potato chips, junk food, you're going to have bad bacteria. And that leads to a lowered immune response. Good bacteria, good immune. And that's why they're suggesting something just as simple, and this is really simple, of just consuming turmeric. How would you do that? Well, turmeric is the yellow coloring herb that is used in many parts of the world, especially in India, uh, in almost all the dishes. If you've ever been to India, you can find at least a hundred plus different types of turmeric and curry dishes. That's what they make curry dishes with. So my suggestion is just try getting some Indian recipes off the internet and trying them. Right? I use it. I use it in soups and I use it in brown rice dishes and quinoa dishes. Healthy bacteria if you had that. And that means you're going to have a healthier nervous system as well. So it's really simple. I've said it many times. I'll say it again. Clean, healthy food, clean, healthy intestines. And that means a longer life. This was published in the Journal of Evidence-Based Integrative Medicine. So, you know, and this is good science, by the way. Remember, from turmeric, you get an active ingredient called curcumin. C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N. And boy, does that help you. 
on more than like 50 different illnesses from cancer. It can keep it from spreading, prevent it, and help it go away. It causes programmed cell death in the cancer cells. It can help you with your heart. So you're getting two really good beneficial things there. Good bacteria, and then something that's a prebiotic that helps you uh, with all kinds of diseases. From the University of Colorado at Boulder comes a study about excess weight. And boy, we have too much of that in the United States. And obesity are more deadly than previously believed. What is one of the biggest problems we are faced with in the United States and not doing a whole lot about? Overeating, under-exercising, being too sedentary, gaining weight. When I was growing up, and I'm sure when many of you were growing up, you didn't have a lot of people as a percentage of your population who were obese. Some were overweight, and younger people rarely were overweight. We were running every place. We were very active, and we burned up calories. But today, we have fewer people just being overweight and far more people being obese. We used to think that if I just keep my good weight, good. Now it's we think just being overweight, well, that's nothing. It is. It leads to obesity, and now we have morbid obesity. And that's where you really put your life on the line. When I was growing up, I rarely saw anyone in my hometown. And I, I was in the largest high school in the state, 3,500 students. And I can remember three or four being obese. I can remember some being overweight. But the vast majority of young people were healthy. We ran everywhere until we were old enough to get a car, and we still ran because of sports. But today, today we are too sedentary. Spend too much time sitting, laying down, watching movies on our, on our electronic gadgets. That leads to being overweight. Overweight leads to being obese. Being obese leads to morbid obesity. We have more obese and morbidly obese adults than ever before in American history. That also means we have more diabetes, more heart disease, more stroke than ever before. Now here's a shocking study from the University of Colorado at Boulder. Excess weight, meaning being obese, is more deadly than previously believed. How so? Because we've been led to believe, don't worry about if you're overweight, just you know, get some bigger clothes, be happy with your life. Okay, be honest. How many people who are obese and morbidly obese are happy? How many people think that, yeah, I, I don't mind being able to do nothing because I'm too overweight. I don't have the oxygen. I don't have the wind capacity. I don't have the strength. I don't have the balance. I don't have the endurance to do anything. So I'll just sit here and veg out. No, no. Most people who are obese are not happy. How to help them lose that weight, motivate them, be a part of their support system, that's what's important. Because here's what awaits you. And this is just simple statistics without the emotion. The latest study shows that they were grossly underestimating your chance of dying prematurely if you're overweight. They can now predict that up uh, one in every six deaths from any cause, the United States, obesity was associated, and you're 91%, I repeat, you're 91% more likely to die prematurely if you're overweight. All right? This was published in the Journal of Population Studies. All the more reason that we should be paying attention to what we eat, our blood pressure, our stress levels, and be determined. And if you don't have a support system, Go online and download some of the motivation tapes so you can motivate yourself. There are plenty of those. I have my own up there uh, to help you if you're having a little trouble. A lot of people are. They're lonely. We have more loneliness now than almost ever before in our history. Uh, we have people who are more sedentary. We have people who are confused about what the heck is going on in this strange world of ours right now. So many crises, not knowing who to believe, what to believe. So people kind of withdraw within themselves. They go to a place where they're just non-committed. Uh, I don't know what to believe. What should I do? I've been eating junk food my whole life. I was told to. Everyone on television ate it. All the celebrities endorsed it. 
and drinking alcohol. And everybody was cool with that. You know, every ad, you didn't see someone who had cirrhosis of the liver in a hospital bed getting a transfusion. Uh, no, you saw young hip people, you know, uh, that were beautiful, perfect hair, perfect skin, perfect musculature, and they were drinking the vodka, they were drinking the bourbon. You know, you see the person throwing that glass down a bar and someone grabs it, yeah, just what I want, something that tastes like turpentine in my mouth. God, I mean, just, I've said all along, um, it's a condition. When I was growing up, uh, people thought it was cool if we were underage to get someone to go in and get us some beer. Beer contained 2% alcohol. That meant you'd have to drink about a case before you'd get drunk. But boy, everybody had a beer belly back then because that's what we did on Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, I know because I worked in a tavern uh, and I worked in the back room uh, frying up the chicken and the fried fish from the local Canal River. <laughs> Anybody ever ate fish out of the Canal River? Dirty as it can be. Canal River went this way and the High River went south. And nobody ever fished in the Canal River, but that's where people would think, oh no, eating a catfish, yeah, that's a bottom feeder, totally polluted, don't ever eat catfish. They're good for, if you have a koi pond, because they eat all the debris at the bottom of the pond. In any case, uh, so I was back there as a young teenager, and I was whipping up all this food and giving it to them. And uh, then I noticed the guy owned the tavern, it's just throw that salt shaker all over everything. Everything had way too much salt. I mean, just today, if you just looked at how much salt was uh, coming out of that shaker on a piece of fried fish, uh, you'd have a heart attack. And uh, But what it was, was, and I asked him once, I go, why do you put so much salt on it? He says, more salt, the more beer they drink. I said, why do you want them to drink more beer? They're here to socialize and watch football and sports. Well, because I want them to drink more beer. <laughs> I, I learned that lesson at about 13. In any case, just think of it this way. Everyone in that, everyone in that we used to call them beer joints, right? then it was called a tavern, kind of sanitized the name. But everyone had a beer belly. And those of us who were still in high school and we had a friend that got us a job, uh, we just looked at all this. That'll never be us. And those people didn't eat a whole lot better at home. It just drank all day long. Now, think about what that does. It does no good in your body at all. No form of alcohol does any good in your body. Now, in red wine, you'll have resveratrol. But you have to drink a case of wine, red wine, to get what you can get in eating some grapes. Why not eat the grapes, not get the alcohol, not talk, create toxic reactions in your liver, your kidney, your brain, and your heart? Yeah, what's the purpose of that? I'm going to have some red wine. It tastes like fermented socks, you know, something that you go, my God, I thought I washed those ass socks after I did the marathon a year ago. No, that's what wine tastes like. But we don't want to act uh, as if we're unsophisticated. So then we, the bouquet is a bouquet crap. <laughs> there is no bouquet smell. You know, they try to act like they know something they don't, pretending to be sophisticated. And that's what they do just about everything. It tastes crappy. If I gave you a glass of orange juice fresh made, a glass of grape juice fresh made, a glass of apple juice fresh made, and I gave you some bourbon and some vodka and some gin, all right, and you drank each one, which one are you going to like? Which one actually tastes good and feel good? The juices. But nobody can make money off that. That doesn't look sophisticated. Could you see all those people in those suits? By the way, this is a... I got this suit in a store... Uh, a repurposed store down, uh, downtown in Soho, 1938. Yeah, they knew how to make a suit back then, 1938. Perfect material. Anyhow, uh, when, you, when you think about how people look, how many hours they spend on their hair and their makeup, to give you the impression that if you drank that beverage, if you ate that, you would look like that. The reality is that all this stuff tastes bad, Look at all of the films where someone says, give me a drink, and then they make a face, you know, like, <clears throat> or you, you, you were cooler if you didn't have to make a face. You could just swig down some something it tastes like. Truly, turpentine, right? Let's go have some turpentine and show that we're really hip. Stupid. It's just mind-numbingly stupid. 
Yet we do a lot of stupid things, don't we? So, why don't we try the simple thing? Lose weight by getting rid of all the alcohol. All right? That's important. Because the average American is gaining weight, not losing it. In fact, a survey, 9 out of 10 adults have tried losing weight in the past 5 years, but 44% gained more than 20 pounds. You don't do that by eating healthy and being active, taking walks after meals. No. You do that when you care enough about your body that you care about the choices you make. And anything that you don't care about your body, how is it that you're going to suddenly separate out the duality of good choices, bad choices, and then make good choices and everything else in your life? It's not going to happen, and we all know that. But we hide our dysfunction. We hide what we don't want to change. We hide what we're afraid to change. We're hiding the insecure, what if I do something and I fail? I don't want to take that risk. Who do you believe? I don't know who to believe. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Who are you voting for? I'm not even certain. I want to vote. That's where we're at right now because of all the crises that are facing us and very few positive solutions, nor very few people who seem to have their stuff together so we can say, okay, tell me what you know. See if it resonates with what I can do. But getting your health together, that should be paramount. Because when your mind is sharp and healthy, because you fed it the neurons, the synopsis, all the things that you need in order to be able to process information, have good cognition, be able to analyze data, be able to step back and go to neutral and say, let me look at the information to see how I'm going to respond to it. Do I really want that big bowl of ice cream with all the sugar in it, all the fat in it, to where tomorrow my eyes are going to be puffy, I'm going to have you know, snot running out of my nose and mucus coughing up every three seconds? Or do I want to huh, have those grapes? have something that's not going to hurt me. We have choices. We have freedom of choice. Unfortunately, more often than not, we make the wrong freedom of choice. This is what this study is showing. just want to share it with you. All right? It's not difficult. If you have confidence that you can do something, follow through on it. Penn State University has a new study about fruits and vegetables, what they call farm-to-fork continuum. Why? It's vital to prevent cancer. For decades, research aimed at improving the yield, the appearance of fruits and vegetables and grains. But now it's time to focus on the science of health benefits of those foods if we consume them on a regular basis. This was done at Penn State's College of Agricultural Sciences. And it concentrated on the food's potential, not just as how it looks, but how it can help fight cancer. And they found all these phytonutrients, all these chemicals, especially in the cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, mustard greens, radishes, watercress, asparagus. Those are really terrific. And we have to have more of those into our diet. And fruits. Fruits are really terrific too. One of the best fruits you can have is a bitter fruit. And uh, bitter fruits also help prevent cancer. And... Also, the grains, whole grains, not processed grains, legumes and pulses, we need that. They all have a capacity to help us with our immune system. And in fact, the study showed that new cancer cases are expected to surge 57% worldwide. Why? Because people are not eating healthy. They're not eating enough healthy food on a regular basis. So let's just pay attention to the foods we eat, and let's focus upon the cruciferous vegetables, all right? And that would help us tremendously. Also, lemons and limes, they also are important in cancer prevention as well. And purple uh, foods like red onions and purple potatoes, they also help as well. And finally, from the University of South Australia, Exercise more effective than medicine to manage mental health. Whoa, this is important. University of South Australia. The researchers are calling for exercise to be a mainstream approach to managing depression. As a new study shows that physical activity is 150% more effective than counseling 
or the leading medications. This was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine. All right, so they looked at 97 reviews, 1,039 trials, 128,019 participants. It shows that physical activity is extremely beneficial for improving symptoms of depression, anxiety, and distress. How about that? Especially if you do it consistently for 12 weeks. Okay, so let's get out and exercise. And in the morning, always good. And then walk fast after a meal. That's the latest on health and healing. And we're going to take a break. Please remember, Monday to Friday, you can go at noon, Eastern Standard Time, to prn.live. That's P R N, Progressive Radio Network. Dot live. That's where my program is. Plus 24 7, some of the best programming you'll see in the United States. Also, go to garynull.com and look at all the articles. I'm approaching a thousand articles written and published, plus documentaries and positive clips. Okay? And we also publish on Rumble. Look under Gary Knoll Film Library and on Odyssey and on Gary Knoll YouTube. Back in a moment. Please stay with us. Are you tired of closed minded programming? Well, look no further than PRN.live, the home for progressive voices. <laughs> <laughs> 